In the last video we saw how we could create a group from the symmetries of an equilateral triangle. And that group consisted of a set, a set that contained the symmetries of the triangle, and a binary operation. And the binary operation was the operation of composition. And composition was defined as taking two transformations, performing one first, and then performing the other second where the transformation you perform first is on the right of the composition sign, and the transformation you perform second is on the left of the composition sign. But, even though we have the set and the binary operation, we're still not sure whether this is a group, because in order for it to be a group, there are four conditions that the set and the binary operation together must satisfy. Those are closure, associativity, identity, and inverse. Closure just means that if I compose any of these two symmetry transformations, I'm going to end up with another symmetry transformation that's already in my set D3. Associativity says that the order in which I perform three symmetry transformations, so one, then another, then another, that it doesn't matter in which order that I compose those symmetry transformations, the result is always going to be the same. The identity condition says that there must be an identity element, and that's an element where if I compose it with any of the other transformations, it doesn't change what that transformation does. And finally, each symmetry transformation has to have an inverse symmetry transformation. That's something that returns the triangle back to its original position, where, again, the labels are A, B, C in the anti-clockwise direction, and A is lying on top. And there's a nice way we can check these conditions, which is through something called a group table, or a Cayley table. And what we do is we write all of the elements in the group horizontally along the top, and then again, vertically along the side, where the rows and the columns meet, we compose those two elements. So in the top leftmost part of the table, we're going to have E composed with E. That's just the transformation that does nothing at all, composed with the transformation that does nothing at all. Or, firstly we do nothing at all, and then secondly we do nothing at all. And well, clearly, we end up doing nothing at all. So E composed with E is E. Now we're going to move to the right, and we're going to see what happens when we have E composed with A. And now this is a good point to say that the order in which these operations occur actually matters, or at least it does in some cases. So here I'm making sure that because the E is coming from the left part of the table and A is coming from the top part of the table, I'm going to make sure that E goes first and A goes second. And so what is E composed with A? Well A is the rotation by 120 degrees anti-clockwise, and then E is do nothing. So first we rotate and then we do nothing. Well again that's just the rotation itself nothing more happens, so E composed with A is simply, actually, instead of saying composed with all the time, we can say blob. The symbol that represents composition looks like a little blob, so E blob A. Then E blob A is equal to A. And now we're going to go to the second row and the first column, remembering that the element that's on the left-hand side of the table comes first, and the element that's on the top comes second. We're going to have A blob E. So this composition is simply saying that firstly we do nothing, and then we perform the transformation A, and again that's just going to be A again. So A blob E is A, and E blob A is A, and you can see where this is going. The identity transformation composed with any of the other transformations just gives back that same transformation. So I can fill in the whole top row of this table, and the whole of the first column of this table. And what that means is that our group has an identity element, so we've satisfied the first of our conditions. The identity transformation is the identity element. If I combine it with any of the other elements, and it doesn't matter in which order I combine it either, it's always going to produce that same element back again. So we've managed to show that one of these conditions is true, but so far it's been quite boring. Um, so let's get to something slightly more interesting, which is A composed with A. But we've seen this before. This was the reason why we called one of our elements, the rotation by 240 degrees, A squared, because rotation by 240 degrees is just the same as rotating by 120 degrees first, and then rotating by 120 degrees second. So A blob A is just equal to A squared. And now what about A blob A squared, or A squared blob A, remembering that the order is important? Well, A blob A squared is firstly perform 240 degree rotation, and then perform a 120 degree rotation. And A squared blob A is firstly perform a 120 degree rotation, and then perform a 240 degree rotation. Both of those rotations add up to 360 degrees, and a 360 degree rotation just brings the triangle back to exactly where it was before, 
which is the job of the identity transformation. So a blob a squared and a squared blob a are both the identity transformation. And what that means is we found an inverse for each of these elements. So the inverse of a is a squared, and the inverse of a squared is a. All we need to do now is find the inverses for the other elements in the group. Actually, I suppose I should also say that the inverse of the identity element is equal to the identity element. You should be able to see why from the table. Now, I've kept saying that the order matters, and so far you might be thinking, well, it, clearly it doesn't. The order has never made a difference, but now we're going to get to a composition where it really does make a difference. So firstly, we're going to look at the composition of A with B, or A blob B. That means apply the vertical flip first, and then apply a 120 degree rotation. But we've met this before, of course, because this was equivalent to the flip in the negative diagonal axis, which we decided to call AB, to remind ourselves that AB is equal to the composition of A with B. But what about B blob A? So that's firstly a 120 degree rotation, and then secondly a flip in the vertical axis. It seems like it might produce the same thing, but if we think about it, what's going to happen is that after the rotation, A is no longer going to be at the top of the triangle, it's actually going to be at the bottom left of the triangle, and C is going to be at the top of the triangle. And then when we flip in that vertical axis, A is going to be in the bottom right of the triangle, C is going to remain at the top, and B is going to be at the bottom left of the triangle. And that is simply a flip in the positive diagonal axis. And a flip in the positive diagonal axis is something that we've called a squared b. So b blob a is actually equal to a squared b. So now you can see why I was being so pedantic about it earlier. a blob b does not equal b blob a. There's no condition that says the order of the elements doesn't have to matter in a group. Now we're going to look at a squared blob a squared. Well, that's a rotation by 240 degrees followed by another rotation of 240 degrees. And there's a couple of ways we can think of the answer. Firstly, we could think that 240 degrees plus 240 degrees is 480 degrees. And that's simply a 360 degree rotation followed by a 120 degree rotation. And since the 360 degree rotation is really doing nothing at all, then all this transformation really is is 120 degree rotation, which is A. We can do this more formulaically using the idea of composition. And that's to say that a squared is equal to a blob a, so we can expand that out and we replace a squared with a blob a. After we've performed that composition, then we compose the result with a squared. But if the associativity condition is true, we haven't checked it so far, but it is true, really. Um, so let's just use it for now. Then we can also write this as a composed with the result of a composed with a squared. And a composed with a squared, we know, we can just read that off the table. We look at a on the left hand side, and then we look at a squared on the top, that's a composed with a squared, and that gives us e. So now looking back at a squared blob a squared, you can see we're going to have a blob e. And a blob e, we can read that off the table again, is just equal to a. So there we go, we've arrived at a again. And we've seen two different ways of thinking about it. One, which is being quite strict and looking at the group composition. And the second, which is looking at the physical structure behind our group, which is the symmetries of a triangle, and working it out from there. We did use associativity without showing that it's true for the group. And actually showing that it's true for the group is something that's really hard to do. You have to do it for every triple of elements. Let's have a look at one example, and then we'll assume that that example applies to the rest of the group even though it's not a safe assumption to do, so I'm cheating in some way. I haven't really done all the work. Let's look at the composition of A with B with A. We can either think of it as the result of the composition of A and B composed with A, or we can think of it as the result of the composition of B and A composed with A. So looking at it this first way, A composed with B is AB, and then AB composed with A, well, this is a bit tricky. This is going to be a rotation of 120 degrees, followed by a reflection in the negative diagonal axis. So that's going to bring A from the top to the bottom left, but then this reflection is going to reflect it back up to the top again. So we're going to have A, C, B. And that, that is simply a reflection in the vertical axis. So A, B composed with A is equal to B. Let's fill that in in the table. The next way of doing this is A composed with the result of 
the composition B and A. So B composed with A, we've seen is A squared B, and A composed with A squared B. A squared B is a flip in the positive axis, but we've also seen how A squared B is a flip in the vertical axis followed by a 240 degree rotation. So we can think of this as a flip in the vertical axis followed by a 240 degree rotation followed by a 120 degree rotation. So that's a flip in the vertical axis followed by a 360 degree rotation. And the 360 degree rotation does nothing, so we're just left with a flip in the vertical axis. So breaking up the triple composition this way too also leads to B. So that's good, it shows us that associativity seems to be working, but like I said, you'd have to check it for every triple of elements, and that's, well, that's very tedious. Now, I'm going to leave the rest of the table for you to fill out. I recommend cutting an equilateral triangle out of a piece of paper, labelling the vertices, and then performing these transformations yourself. Please, try and fill out this table for yourself. Maybe you could reply with one of these compositions. So for example, what's B blob AB? Thank you for watching.